I, um, I hope this is a quick video. I just want to make a quick video on this idea that there's no real us in our opinion. There's no us. I think that's a concept that we can all understand. There's just a very, it's an illusion. We're viewing something that's happened. If I move my fingers, I'm just viewing something that's happening outside myself. There's no, there's no, you just, you know there's some, the process happening, but you have no control. There's a process happening. Sort of like there's a distinct process happening. It's just happening in the same thing, the continuous thing. So if you cut off your arm, it's not moving anymore. And this thing that we're projecting is in a way that we have this, this tie that we're, this awareness is tied to this movement that I'm having, but it's not the same thing. Sort of like a cut off my hand. It's no longer a part of me. I use this hand to pick up the hand that I cut off. And it's no longer interaction other than interacting with something outside of myself. I could bend the fingers, but it's not touching me anymore. Um, I can bend the fingers and do all sorts of things. It's no longer an interaction. It's sort of like watching something happen outside of myself. It's happening outside of myself, but um, it's doing um, the same thing that I'm doing if I move my fingers or I'm talking right now. It's just an interaction that I'm aware of and I'm moving. Um, it's sort of like the thought processes that lead to you say saying something or just you viscerally reacting to something. That's something that happens um, against your will. It's happening. There's no will, but obviously. Um, and we, they're on a different level, like free will is on a different level. From our point of view, we have free will, but at the same time, it's an illusion. Um, sort of like... Um, 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 uh, that we... Um, we're living on a deterministic level. And it's a good illusion, and once you realize that illusion, um, that we're where you don't have any kind of free will, um, it's in and of itself the illusion is something that we can't put our fingers on because that's the whole point. These senses that we're experiencing, this is, is an illusion in and of itself and that's the thing that's describing the situation. Um, the illusion is the thing that we're living and there's no way, even if we understand that there's an illusion, we can understand it leading to a logical conclusion. Um, that doesn't mean we can necessarily see the conclusion. Um, we can't see the illusion, we can't see past it, we can understand it, but I'm still going to be experiencing things the same thing exactly the exact same way. Perceptually, um, you can't change the illusion. That's a good point. But perceptually, you can understand it and see it and see exactly what's going on. But the illusion is so strong, the very foundation of it is the illusion. It is an illusion. That's in and of itself the illusion. It is an illusion existing in and of itself. It exists as an illusion. And even if you understand the illusion, you can never really see past it. It's the understanding, the perception of understanding that illusion that can cause some kind of um, say, pain and understanding the truth or seeing the truth or knowing too much how everything's just moving forward it's based on cause and effect or interactions that we have there's chaotic interactions um, on an individual a cause and effect is something we see in our, on, on our individual level based on, say, something like free will or will from our point of view that we have sort of like interaction is something that we see from determinism it's just interactions a bunch of chaotic interactions, which are going to work a certain way in the end, leading to an end from a beginning. Um, so beyond that, um, there's nothing more to it. And there's no you. There's just interactions. I'm, my hand moving right now, I can feel this hand because it's tied to the sentience. It's in the same thing. But if, if I didn't feel, it'd just be something moving. Um, and it just moves. Even if you think about, okay, I'm going to move my hand. I move my hand. The same thing's happening inside of your head. The same process is happening inside of your head. It's working on the same mechanism. The only difference is that you are aware. You can feel. And that's the thing that matters. It matters the most. So you feel. And that's the only thing between your hand moving based on the sentience and the interaction of the thing that's happening inside of you and say something, watching a clock tick, the, the, the arm going around. That's the same thing. Imagine if I had some kind of telekinetic powers and I can interact with a clock. It would be the same thing as me moving my fingers. Only I couldn't necessarily feel it. Or if I can inject my feelings into that clock, it could be the exact same thing. It's just interaction. Um, sort of like we never really have an opinion. That's the point I want to make real quick in this video. Um, let, but before, I just want to say, I like the illusion is the sentience. We're living in the illusion. We're living in the process. And that's why we can't see the illusion. And the thing that we're based on is, the, is based on the process, too, creating the illusion, moving forward. And there's nothing we can do other than perceptually or understand, intellectually re recognize that this is something that's happening. Um, 
sort of like we can't necessarily recognize, um, we can understand the illusion that there is an illusion. Uh, it's, it's obvious there's an illusion. Cause and effect, things are happening a certain way. Even based on the idea of cause and effect, we can understand um, that things are happening a certain way. And based on the things that happen a certain way, it's going to happen a certain way in the future. Based on these interactions, it explains itself. But see, that's the thing. It's an illusion where we think that we have free will. Even if we look at the past and understand it, I can interact on my own level in a certain way, and that's going to have an effect. But the only time it really matters in applying determinism that exists is in the past and understanding that something happened in the past and it led to where I am now. And I, everyone on the outside of me, my individual circumstance, my body, has just as much an effect on me as I do on myself. Looking at you, when, let's see, that, that goes back to the idea of looking past um, the screen door, looking past the small holes and not recognizing, just bending your view a little bit or crossing your eyes and you see exactly what you're looking through. And it's very obvious. It's leading. It's obvious. Cause and effect interactions leading to where you are now. It was going to happen a certain way because they happened a certain way. It explains itself. Um, but obviously we're always looking for some greater way of describing things or something beyond that. And there's nothing beyond that. It's very simplistic. It's very easy. You just got to take a step back and stop being so full of shit and um, so far up your own ass. Or so up someone else's ass. You're looking up the uh, crack of their asshole a little too much. So that's all you're doing. You need to take a step back and see the bigger picture. That's all we need to do. The illusion of cause and effect. The illusion of... Um, and that We're based on that illusion, but this illusion of things, moving, interactions. It's just movement. And I'm aware the movement that's happening, creating sentience, is moving. It's an interaction in the same body. And just like a clock, my hands moving is only meaningful is because I can feel. And beyond that, if I can make a clock move, if I didn't feel in my hands, and, I, and sort of like cutting the hand off and moving the fingers, or uh, having no feeling, a numb hand, or whatever maybe where I can't feel, being paraplegic, or just moving te telekinetically clocks, or just look a uh, clock hand, or a clock hand just moving in the background. It's all the same interaction. Sort of like the thought process happening here. I'm going to move my hand, and I'm going to move my hand. But where do you think those thoughts are coming from? They're coming from just jerks or interactions that are happening based off of an initial reaction. Initial reaction caused all these different reactions causing interaction inside of yourself based on the same mechanism happening on outside, outside of yourself happening on the inside of you creating the same mechanism inside the mechanism creating the whole mechanism which is one and one the mechanism that's working. You're inside the mechanism but you are the mechanism itself. There's no inside the mechanism. The mechanism works in the same way. You're just working on a smaller level made up of cells made up of different things. Everything's made up of something. The same foundation just in different clusters creating something different. And that's exactly, that's the only distinction. Meaningful distinction. If any, if, if at all meaningful. The only meaning is really the experience that these sentience things have. Beyond that, it doesn't mean much of anything, except how something on the outside makes you feel. Um, but it's about your feelings, and the feelings matter, not the thing. Because it could be anything. So that thing doesn't mean anything unless it feels. Because anything can cause you to feel good or bad. It's a matter of understanding that and coming to the conclusion that it's happening inside of yourself and that's what means something. Um, so I want to think, did I describe that good enough? Yes. Interactions. Interactions. Yes, so these interactions that we're having, um, we're part of the mechanism, there's nothing more to the mechanism. It's a very simplistic process and there's, there's nothing more to it than that. Um, sort of like there's no opinion that we have. Back to the point. Um, there's no opinion that we have. Um, we constantly change our opinion, um, our understanding of things. Um, and our disposition changes. We're emotionally reactive creatures. We're experiencing something. Um, it goes to this idea that you have no solid opinion. Um, I'm kind of looking at some notes I have on the side basic notes, seeing if that helps me. Um, about this opinion, this opinion thing, how it's constantly changing um, to a certain extent, unless you come to a logical conclusion, but obviously we're emotional creatures, and that's the very foundation of creating this kind of thing. It's uh, controlled chaos, sort of like our emotions. It's going to happen a certain way, but it doesn't mean that chaos couldn't happen. Um, things are going to happen, but we are still playing out the game. We're still doing the thing. The thing hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen, and it can, it's going to be in the past once it's happened. And that's the only way you can apply determinism, and it exists just based on the fact that there was a past, or there's something that did happen, movement, leading into something that's going to happen based on interactions, a chaotic interaction that we call cause and effect. 
on our level of understanding will and understanding how things interact with each other. Our understanding and distinction between those things. Like free will, determinism. Free will works on the same level as cause and effect, and determinism works on the same level as um, interaction. Just vague, um, just interactions with each other, chaotic interactions that are going to happen a certain way, but from our point of view, they're chaotic. And it's going to lead to a deterministic end, and these interactions are going to lead to something. Making that distinction is important in our will, sort of like cause and effect. There's no cause and effect unless you want to call it, say there's an initial cause and initial effect. Unless you want to close off an environment and say this is what caused this. This thing touched this thing, this thing touched this thing. Other than that, there can't be much in the way of distinctions other than this touched this, this touched this, and this interacted with that. There's interactions, and that's a better way of describing something, is interactions. Because this thing causing this thing was caused by this thing, and you just say, why not go keep going when going back? But unless you close off in a certain area and say, okay, this was hit by this, but that's irrelevant. We're going to close it off at this thing, and this thing caused this thing, and this thing caused this thing. Um, that's the only way you can really apply it, is contriving um, some kind of closed environment and finding a way to enclose certain situations and understanding um, where they exactly they came from. <sighs> so things like um, our opinions and things are constantly changing our points of view um, based on our emotional dispositions and our ideas of beauty, this ever-changing brain process of consciousness. There's no us, there's no our opinion there's a constantly changing opinion, a projection that's happening, an interaction that's happening inside of me that's being used and articulated in words. Articulated in my head is words as well, and I'm projecting that out as an interaction happening inside of myself based on, say, speech and words, a diaphragm interacting with my throat muscles or whatever it is for me to speak. And that's the interaction I'm having. And that's why this interaction is so vague in describing something. But it doesn't need your description to exist outside in and of itself though your interaction exists in and of itself. Um, um, so your visceral reactions, your ideas, your, your uh, thought out and pro uh, ideas such as beauty and what you find attractive, what you find uh, sensible, what you find anything can, is constantly changing. Um, constantly you're moving forward, there's a constant interaction happening leading to something new and um, different that's leading to something new and different and so on and so forth. Um, leading to different opinions, leading to different conclusions. Say you're ignorant and you keep on getting more intelligent, but obviously your, your idea of beauty can change your, all these interactions happening in your, there's no solid foundation for which something's existing. Um, you can have a learned likeness to something um, and interacting with something. Sort of like how you learn to like certain foods. You either like it viscerally or you learn to like it or you, you end up not ever liking it. Um, so it's about learning like someone growing on someone, say, interacting with the, another person and finding that they eventually grow on you and you realize that you do love them and as opposed to, you know, just viscerally reacting and saying, oh, that person is not for me or whatever it may be or whatever it is as an example. And you can learn to like someone, not necessarily learn, but they grow on you. And it's this constant changing, this changeability of reality, the malleability of reality moving forward that makes life have some kind of mystery moving forward. Oh, how am I going to make my next meal tomorrow? Is there going to be some bo hot boiling water that's going to pour on my arm and make my life miserable? And that's really the only thing that we can see is these negative interactions that we can have based on changes that we can project and expect in the future. And it's usually always negative things. Is it going to be better? Well, the better leads to what? What does the better lead to? Another deprivation or a greater deprivation from that better that you were in, leading to another satisfaction, to a deprivation. You get to the satisfaction, you go, the satisfaction is when you're at the end, and the tension releases, and it's quick, and you're right back to pulling. I'm here, okay, I'm doing it again, I'm doing it again, I'm here, okay, I'm doing it again, same thing, and that's all we're doing. So you can learn to like things, and, and so on and so forth, based on this constant interaction of moving into the future, and... And moving into something that's going to happen. And just because it's going to happen a certain way, I don't know it's, what, how it's going to happen. It's going to happen, and I'm going to look back and say that's how it happened. And that's the only way you can describe it. Um, I don't know if I explained this good enough, but...
so yeah, it's it's a you don't have an, a solid opinion. You only have um, predispositions and visceral reactions, and and that's based on things your predispositions based on how you visceral reactions that you had and formed based on things leading into something that can be your thing and visceral reactions are things that you viscerally react to out of nowhere sort of like touching something hot too hot then you, you bring your, your finger back or you viscerally yell say someone with Tourette's viscerally yells or whatever it may be or you have an, a solid opinion um, you don't really have when it's constantly changing obviously understanding the facts of reality are different than your actual opinion uh, we always have some kind of judgment opinion that's happening on the inside of us and how we really feel about something. And that's constantly changing, and that constant you is, or whatever you sense to be you, or whatever there is of something that you consider to be you, is never you, it's just a constant changing interaction. It exists in this thing, but there's a constantly sort of like someone that has an amnesia. They're not them anymore. It's a constantly changing re reaction. They're, it's in the same body, but they're no longer have the predispositions necessarily that they had before, unless it's a visceral reaction that they had before, which may lead to a similar end that they had before, and they're going to learn the same things over again based on their predispositions, at least in a similar way. So there's no real us. There's no real opinions. There's only predispositions and visceral reactions that we have. Opinions are just words that well, is a concept we apply to. Um, ideas that we have swirling around in our head based on these predispositions or reactions that we have and how we find a way to portray these opinions that we have <laughs> if that makes any sense um, so you have no real solid opinion um, just predispositions and just reactions and that's going to lead to some other thing um, leading to something else and then obviously depending on the circumstance it could change your opinion on something or you, you interact with something these interactions that we have and this visceral reaction that we have to the environment is the only thing that we have and the, an opinion it doesn't mean anything beyond an idea and the idea can lead to something else and lead to something else completely and utterly differently and it's a matter of the interaction that we have in this environment that creates this opinion and gives it any real meaning and almost um, makes it meaningless this idea of an opinion other than a word describing it um, we just have reactions and visceral reactions interacting with the environment and what we find in these reactions can change what we call an opinion but it was just in a reaction that we have leading to another predisposition that we can have if I want to use vague words in describing things so I don't want to go on anymore this video has been long enough anyway so I hope I made my point clear enough so thank you until next time bye